In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Finally, after two and a half weeks of preparation, we've reached Ash Wednesday, beginning of the Great Lent. A little recap of our various purposes or motives for our great 40 days of fasting for this Lent that we are undertaking today. We hear it um, frequently talked about or mentioned the three general purposes of fasting, almsgiving, um, oops, that was the third one, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, being the thir- three sort of purposes of Lent. Uh, we can look at each one of these individually. So when it comes to fasting, we can take all sort of bodily mortifications in general, all those unpleasant things that we can do or ought to do to afflict ourselves. And in this case, we see a real negative focus, which is good. Um, we use this for our motivation, especially for, you know, we have all these great um, enthusiasm coming into Lent, but uh, we can lag in that. So remember, when we undertake bodily penances like fasting, like other things like that. It's good to remember, I deserve this. This is punishment for my sins. I need to work this off so I don't have to spend much time in purgatory. Like this is an act of justice. I need to undereat for all those times I overate. Underdrink for all those times I overdrank. You know, I need this. This is a part of justice. I can't let myself off the hook because I did this to myself. I have to pay this back. It's like paying back a debt. We also look at this, too, on the positive sense, especially in regards to the dimension of prayer. We should be cutting back on distractions. Cutting back, we should be doing mental fasting as well. Cutting off on things like TV or the Internet. Cutting down or cutting off completely things like social media. Um, things that, that suck away our time or occupy our minds unnecessarily, like the news. We can't do anything about what goes on in the world. We can write the news for tomorrow, today. You know, people are fighting about this, that, and the other thing. We really actually don't need to... It's more of an entertainment. And entertainment is fine, but for Lent it's good to give those up because it frees up your mind. It frees up your mind for prayer, for greater things. So you take more time for prayer. You schedule more time in prayer. Say one rosary a day usually. Why not say two rosaries? You get another prayer. Or, the best thing, then you have more time for that private personal prayer. If you're only able to spend 15 minutes a day in personal prayer, then spend 20, then half an hour. If you're only spending half an hour now, bump that up to an hour, 45. You can take that time back. Finally, the third thing. Now, we generally imagine um, charity to be almsgiving, and we should. It's a good way of, of looking at those things we give up eating light, giving up meat, um, eating poor, you know, rice and beans and things that don't cost very much. All that money we're saving, saving, we should be giving it to the poor who have to eat poor every single day, or at least, you know, in our country should be eating poor every single day. But in other countries, really are eating poor, basically eating dirt. Actually, literally, some places they do eat dirt because they don't have any food. They want something in their bellies. Um, so that's one thing we can do. You know, that's, that's definitely almsgiving, and we should be doing almsgiving. But we can make our own penances acts of charity. All those things we do. Um, it's been a while since I've been here, and it's been a constant refrain for me back where I'm from. But I encourage you to go big for Lent. Go big for Lent. Don't do this like I gave up one thing for Lent. You want to make Lent like a retreat, or like going to prison. You want to make it a completely separate part of your life with lots of things, lots of things. It was like, I'm changing my life. I'm like shutting down. And it really is kind of like um, like going to prison, or at least it should be. Again, if you make it as like one thing, then it's going to be hard to do that one thing, oh, I give up chocolate for Lent. Okay, do tons of things. Do lots of things. Do as much as you think you can. Because it should be like going to prison. And let's look at the reasons. Why, why do people go to prisons? Same reasons why we do penance during Lent, right? People go to prisons um, because they have to pay back for what they've done. They have to satisfy justice. And they have to go there and spend that time day in and day out. It's not like, oh, well, you said you were sorry. Good for you. No. Now you have to go to prison. Now you have to work. 
So, again, that's why Lent should feel like a prison. The harder you are on yourself this Lent, the less hard God will have to be on you in purgatory. We know from the saints that just a tiny little ounce, tiny little ounce of penance we put on ourselves in this life is worth like a ton of penance that God will put on us in the next life, in purgatory. Granted that we're, we're lucky enough to make it that far. So it's like prison in that way. It's also like prison in the sense of what about, what are those men who make, who make their own prisons of their own volition? Those people who join religious life. They join religious life to remove themselves from the world, to remove themselves from distractions, from attachments, to attach themselves more fully and more totally to God. And so you're not called, or you may not be called to religious life, but this Lent, you can be, you can participate in, this, in religious life to a certain degree, this Lent, by going big, by cutting out those things completely, shutting the TV off, turning the internet off, going to prayer more, doing everything I can. I'm going to live like a religious this land, or at least these 48 days. You know, you can take Sunday off on some things. Nothing sinful, of course, but you know, it's, you're not religious, so you know, it's okay to have, have a little treat on Sundays. Charity. Charity. John 15, 13. Greater love than this hath no man than a man lay down his life for his friend. Why does Christ do penance for us? Now, think about this. Again, going back to the prison idea. If, if you could trade places with someone who is guilty in prison, if your forgiveness was so pure and deep like Christ's, that you would take their penalties for them. That's what we have an opportunity to do in doing penance during Lent. Doing penance not only for your sins, but for other people's sins. We do penance with and for other people. It's good to have our friends involved. That's why when the church had really strict rules where everyone had a fast and abstained during Lent, it was, it was really encouraging because we're all in this together. Well, you can still have that. You can have your little penance buddy. Hey, you want to do this with me? Yeah, okay, you know, all right, well, we're both going to take cold showers during Lent. You can keep yourself as accountable. Oh, it's hard, you know, you kind of complain or whatever. It's nice to know you're not in it alone. It's good to have someone with you on the way, but even more than that, more than that, it's good to do it for the other, other people's benefit. Say, well, I don't really think I need this. Maybe I don't struggle with this sin. What about those people who do? What about your family members that struggle with this sin? What about other people in society? My goodness, this is Louisiana. You know, sins of the flesh are like, they grow on trees around here. Um, It's just, you you can apply that. You say, well, maybe I don't need to take a cold shower to curb curb lust or something. But there's someone out there who does. And I'm going to help him by doing penance with him, even though I don't know who he is. Right? But you can do penance for those who are enemies. Just like Christ did penance for us who, who were his enemies. This is the most, one of the most perfect reasons, most perfect motives for our penance. is doing it for other people. And it's a good motive for yourself too. Because when you get tired and you don't want to do it, remember, I'm, I can help someone else out. You know, you're not going to jump into a, a, a pool of water, a frozen lake or something, just for fun. But if there's somebody drowning in there, you will. I hope you will. At least if you can do it and come out alive. Take, take an example of a fun little penance. Like I said, uh, I encourage you to just do as much as you possibly can. I have lots of ideas. You can ask me afterwards or email me or things like that. But one, one little fun penance is putting a pebble in your shoe. Putting a pebble in your shoe. Um, it's a lot of fun. So why, why do you put a pebble in your shoe? Or why should you put a pebble in your shoe during Lent? Well, first of all, once again, you do it to pay back. Do it to pay back. Um, for a little restitution for those little sins. Pebble is a little thing. You know, sometimes we think our female sins are little. We let them go, right? They're in the back. They're around us. They're like, oh, I'll go to confession later. All those times we put off going to confession for those little sins and we let them stay close to us, hang around in our shoes. 
digging into our foot. Ah, it's not that bad. It's not a mortal sin. That's that pebble in your shoe. That reminds you, hey, buddy, you did this to yourself. You said you wanted to carry a little sin around with you for a while. Now you get to do it. Welcome to the party. Right? So we do it for penance. We do it to pay back for those things or whatever you else you like to imagine in your mind. Right? Another reason, detachment. Pebble in your shoe reminds you you take a step and you're like, oh, right, my home isn't this life. I'm not called to be comfortable in this life. That's not my vocation. That's not my destiny. At least I don't want it to be my destiny. I want happiness in heaven to be my destiny. Pebble in your shoe reminds you, this world isn't my home. This world doesn't love me. Jesus loves me. This world doesn't love me. This world is a pebble in my shoe, which is here to irritate me. But part of it is to remind me that I don't belong here. It's not my home. So it gives us that detachment. I only find my peace in Christ. I only find my happiness there. And then finally, of course, that charity. We all wish we were more patient, more meek, more humble. We all want to work on that. We all wish we could bear wrongs patiently. We turn the other cheek. We love our enemy, but it's really hard to do. Well, let that pebble represent your enemy. You can give it a, a name like, oh, there's Bob. You know, there's that guy who likes to... No one in particular named Bob, right? There's that guy who likes to needle me, likes to provoke me. Or he doesn't try to, but he just does. I just hate his face. You know, there's something about this guy that just irritates me. I'm provoked to anger around him. Well, th put the pebble in your shoe for him. You know what? I need to work. I need to work on being good around Bob. I need to work about not responding when he pokes me. So I'm going to put a pebble in my shoe and I'm going to learn from that pebble how to be patient. It's going to teach me. It's going to be a little Bob for me every day. Because then I get used to that. I'm like, you know what? You know, I can do my stuff. I can go around my whole life with a pebble in my shoe. And you know, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not that bad if I let Bob get the last word and some silly argument or something like that, or if I don't respond to something, he says, oh, blah, blah, blah. Eh, you know, I can do that. It helps us with that. It also helps make an act of charity. Like, you know what? This guy is provoking me, and it's not good for him, and I'm, I feel bad for that, and I'm going to do some penance for him. I'm going to put a little pep in my shoe for this guy. Finally, Sticking with that little metaphor, and this can work with anything. I'm just picking the pebble. Work with anything you like. Different dimensions. How often are we a penance for Christ? All the time. How often are we a pebble in Christ's shoe? And of course, as we know, for Lent, as we know, going into Passion, meditation on the Stations of the Cross, much more than a pebble in Christ's shoe, we are the cross for Christ to carry. You are a thorn in his sacred head. You're not a pebble in his shoe. We're the nail in his foot. We don't need any more motivation than this to remember that Christ put a nail through his feet for us. We can put a pebble in our shoe for him. All of our penances can be done just for love of Christ, just to be like him, just to say, you know what, Lord? You were cold. You were cold in this life. Cold physically, cold spiritually. Cold because you had to sleep in a dungeon. Cold because you were stretched out on the cross. Cold because men didn't love you like they should have. I'm going to be cold then for you a little bit. I'll take a cold shower. I'll remind myself of how I turned a cold ear to you. Or I'll spend more time in prayer so I'm not being so cold to you anymore. But all these things, you do them all, why should I do this? I don't want to do this. It's unpleasant. I don't like it. I'm hungry. I'm tired. So was Christ. So was Christ. If we do our penances with Christ, they'll bear great fruit in us because they'll make us more like Christ. 
So again, go big this Lent. Don't, you know, half whatever it, right? Go big for your family, for your friends, for your neighbors, for your enemies. Go big for your traditions, for your true will. Oh, why don't we do things the way they used to? Blah, blah, blah. Well, do it. Go big. Above all, go big for God. Go big for God. Christ went big for you. Christ would do everything for you, for us. He didn't have to. He didn't have to suffer the crucifixion on the cross to pay back for man's sins. Think about that. He did it to show his great love for us, show the depth of his love, um, the depth of damage that sins do, but really just to express his love for us. Let's take our penances as a way to make that expression back to Christ. This is my love for you. This is my, I'm going to do this. It's hard and unpleasant. I will afflict myself for love of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.